Welcome to another episode of Does It Hold Up? I'm Ganon, and today we'll be covering a game I haven't actually played before, and probably wouldn't if not for starting the series. That game being Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus, an action stealth game developed by Sucker Punch Productions, which came out in September of 2002. I'm not too sure why I didn't pick this gem up at the local GameStop when I was a kid, but from what I remember about my younger self, I like big flash explosions and cool weaponry so I can see how it didn't appeal to me at the time. Especially with games like Ratchet and Clank and the Jack and Daxter trilogy, which had me in a chokehold for a while. Right out of the gate, I'd love the use of shadows to give Sly that mystery about him. Also, I like how they show off Sly's agility, with him hopping rooftop to rooftop and strafing on the side of buildings. It really gives me that thiefy feel I was expecting. Not too sure if thiefy is a word, but it is today. Anyways, we start our story with probably my favorite character, Sly, Bentley. Right, the story. We're about to break into police headquarters located in Paris, France. A quick side note, I really like the use of real world locations in this game. It makes it feel like a true adventure, with every location being a reflection of the boss of each zone. It's a cool experience, and I'll try and show you some of my favorite spots as we cover the game. Normally I would cover game mechanics and story separately, but this time I'll do both. The blue sparkles indicate where you can perform a thieving action. In this case, it's a strafe spot. Just hold the B or the circle button to continue strafing. You can also jump and double jump by pressing A or X. Double jumping doesn't give you an extra height, instead offers more maneuverability. We quickly find Ms. Fox's office and enter it, locating the safe which holds the files that have information on the big bads of the game. After obtaining the files and leaving Sly's infamous calling card, we run into a reoccurring character, Inspector Carmelita Fox, who has been on the Cooper Gang's trail for a while now. Raccoon, I've caught you red-handed. Ah, Carmelita. I haven't seen you since I gave you the slip in Bombay. Which reminds me, you need to return the Firestone of India to its rightful owners. Ah, uh, and I was gonna give it to you as a little token of my... Hey, you know, that bazooka really brings out the color of your eyes. Very fetching. You think? This pistol packs a paralyzing punch. You ought to try it. Might snap you out of your crime spree. And give up our little rendezvous? Plenty of time for that once you're safely behind bars. Love to stick around and chat, but I just dropped by to pick up this case file. Man, Sucker Punch was cooking with these character introductions. Not too much info about them, but I get an idea of what the personalities are like. Not to mention, I love the history that they set up between these guys, especially Carmelita and Sly. Get used to seeing Carmelita, by the way. She'll pop up a few more times. After we escape Carmelita, we get to see our first cutscene, establishing St uh, uh, Sly's background story. The background story for Sly is quick and to the point. He's a descendant of a long line of master thieves who recalled all their techniques into an ancient book known as the Thievius Raccoonus. But the day he was meant to inherit the book, five figures broke into his house, murdering his father and ransacking the place until they found the book splitting it into five parts, scattering across the world. After the death of his father, Sly was put into an orphanage where he met his lifelong friends, Bentley and Murray. I'm really loving the story so far. Let's keep it up by talking about the first boss of the game, Sir Raleigh the Frog. When he was younger, Raleigh had everything he could need, but it wasn't enough to sate his boredom. On a whim, he tried piracy and he enjoyed it greatly, which jump-started his long career in crime and also got him a special spot as Chief Machinist of the Fiendish Five. His less known location was the Isle of Wrath, off the coast of Wales, sitting in the Welsh Triangle. I like the title cards they add after introducing a boss. It reminds me of old cartoons. A nice touch. We head over a hill after entering the zone, where we see Riley's weather machine, which he uses to sink ships and plunder their loot. I really think that this is like a cool addition there's not many times I think I've seen like a weather machine be used in this type of way. I guess I just think it's really cool, and I wanted to point it out. <laughs> Back with some more game mechanics. One of the main gimmicks of the game are spotlights. Basically, if you run into them, they turn red and become deadly. The only way to turn off the machines is to hit the security box at the end of the stage, or the section that you activate security. After beating a stage, you're given a key, which is used to unlock specific actions on the map. 
like the generator or a cannon on Raleigh's map, for example. Three keys are needed to unlock the first map action, and all seven keys are required to get to the boss of the map. It's a nice way to set up the game, I feel, because it doesn't really slow you down too much. One other thing, on most maps you can find clue bottles, which are used to get combinations to the safes located somewhere on the stage you're on. There are two things you can find in a safe, a page for the Thievius Raccoonus, or blueprints that, gain, that let you gain access to breakables and collectibles spread throughout the stage, using your Binocucom, of course. After collecting the first set of keys, we destroy the generator and move to the next section of the map, where we have a minigame, which isn't too bad. All we have to do is shoot treasure chests and collect them, and shoot the crabs that try to take them from us. But let's get into Riley, since we have all the keys. Listen, Raleigh, wipe up my family and steal what's mine, you better expect company. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. How sloppy of me not to finish the job. Obviously, we should have snuffed you out as well. So, without further ado, let me make amends by bloating to gargantuan size and squashing you like the insignificant bug that you are. Bring it on. The first phase of Raleigh, just wait for him to finish jumping and then hit him. The second phase will have one platform that Raleigh bounces on till you can hit him. The third phase makes platforms Raleigh jumps on fall into the water for a short time. And the last phase, only one platform remains with Raleigh jumping on it and lashing out with his tongue. You're no match for Mugshot, my villainous cohort in Utah. You will see. Mesa City is so well guarded, a snake couldn't slither in without setting off alarms. I really like the fact that he just says, Ugh! when he dies. Well, he doesn't die. He just passes out. Anyways, for defeating Riley, you'll obtain a page of the Thievius Raccoonus made by Sly's ancestor, Ryoichi Cooper which taught Sly the ability to perform the Spire Jump. I'll give you an example of it in a moment, but check out this funny headline on a newspaper after Riley's arrested by Carmelina. Hot chick with gun busts an amphibious yuck mouth. What even is that title? <laughs> Let's see what this mugshot fellow is all about. I got a feeling he's going to be one of my favorite characters in the game. Mugshot, the ruthless muscle of the Fiendish Five, wasn't always the meathead we see today. He was born the runt of the litter, and deemed a laughingstock for it. His only escape from relentless bullying were old gangster movies he watched. He admired how the people on the screen never took crap from anyone. So, from that day forward, he worked out tirelessly to achieve his physique you see today, and taking his, I'd say, rightful revenge on those who bullied him, leading to now. A very solid intro, I'll add. I like the title card they give him as well. Not to mention, I really like the colors. They really pop. We enter the first zone right away where we're able to try the new spire jump technique we've got. Let's ask Bentley how to use it. You mean the ninja spire jump? Yeah, do me a favor and read me the instructions again. To land us safely upon diminutive points, Liebeth lively impresses the triggering device with the round geometrical object emblazoned upon it. So jump and hit the circle button to land on narrow spots. That's a rough translation. Okay, legit, I think Bentley's my favorite character, just because of his nerd speak. It's just too funny to me. <laughs> I didn't mention this before, mostly because it never happened to me. But if you fall in water, you take damage. And you can't die from this if you're not careful. But you don't have to wait too long for this, mostly because there's a safe coming up with a page that allows you to fall in the water without taking damage. It's a pretty good upgrade, IMO. I just wanted to show off security getting upgraded really quick to give you an idea of what I run through. I'll show you more of these later when the security gets a little more complex. 
we quickly collect our first key and head into the stronghold of Mugshot, where we get a great view of the casino he's taken over. I love the fire hydrant at the top. It's funny because he's a dog. After picking a random place to start, I stumble into a racing minigame of all things. At least the prize is a key. It's not that crazy of a race though, so I went after getting used to the controls. And yet another minigame appears. This time, all I have to do to get a key is help Murray make it all the way to the top. It's not very hard once you know where all the enemies are. Here's a cool section I wanted to show off to you guys. The security layout is getting more challenging and I'm really liking it a lot. Especially with the addition of more interesting laser layouts that require more precise jumps. So, one of Sly's ancestors apparently can speed up time, somehow. It doesn't really surprise me much considering another can slow down time, but I've come to this realization. Sly's whole family are literal thief gods. How do they ever get caught? How are they not bored from being so much better? <laughs> Whatever, now that we've collected enough keys, I can move into the casino, which looks just as good as I thought it would. It even comes with Mugshot's ugly mug. Pretty cool, right? Here's another cool sequence I like. You have to climb on these neon lights to make your way all the way to the top of this tower to make it fall down. Then you get this nice personal message from Mugshot. I love it. I got a personal message for the two bit thing who's making off with all my treasure keys. And then, Pally, if I get my hands on you, I'm gonna fit you with your own pair of cement bunny slippers. You hear me? Your lunch meat, jerk! Your lunch meat, jerk, is probably my favorite line in this game. It's too funny, <laughs> especially with the way he says it. After that kind declaration, we continue to the Wrecking Ball and drop it to get the key. This has to be one of my favorite maps, mostly because of how they make you run through it all. It feels really good. But it seems like Inspector Fox has found us once again. Well, 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 look who just walked into my crosshairs, Sly Cooper. About time you showed up, Miss Fox. I was getting worried about you. I thought you took a wrong turn somewhere back in Paris. The only one making wrong turns is you, Sly. I'd suggest you surrender before I paralyze you with my good friend, the shock pistol. Now see, a girl whose best friend's a firearm's got issues. A little dinner, a little dancing. I think I can help you out. Hmm, sounds romantic. As long as you don't mind dining in jail. Nah, I hear the service is lousy. Once I catch you, you'll know for yourself. I just can't help but love the interactions of these two. They bounce off each other so perfectly. Oh yeah, and she's like, trying to kill us, but I was too busy collecting stuff at the time. <laughs> I bet she's thinking, is this guy really just collecting stuff while I'm trying to kill him? I mean, the ability. Because, uh, inspectors don't kill. I'm gonna hunt you down, Cooper. You can't run forever. Now with all keys obtained, we can confront Mugshot for another page. Let's go. boys have been yapping about some big mysterious dude running around cracking skulls and <laughs> and and this is it you're the monkey wrench in my operation some scrawny rat with a stick hey, wait a second i seen that stick before maybe when my father knocked your block off with it your father wow you're a cooper you know that Singus Rakamagookas had a lot of nice pictures, but way too many big boys. So you don't mind just handing it over? Why? <laughs> what are you kidding? You break into my place, steal my stuff, trash the joint, I feel transgressed and violated. Let's rock! <laughs> Okay, Mugshot is another easy boss. All we need to do for all phases is turn all the mirrors by hitting them. But be aware, he'll be chasing you down all the time trying to shoot you. Use the crystals and mirrors for cover. This is impossible. A little pipsqueak like you beating a big strong bruiser like me? It ain't right. With Mugshot taken down, our next location will be in Haiti where Miss Ruby, our next foe, lies. 
But the page we get next for the Devious Raccoonus is an entry for Tennessee Kid Cooper, whose specialties are the rope walk and rail grind. Very useful techniques indeed. As a child born into a family of mystics, other kids feared Miss Ruby because of her powers. With no one to hang out with, she relied on the undead to keep her company. But a career in crime allowed her to punish those who feared her. And as chief mystic of the Fiendish Five, she broke the laws of nature's to get what she desires. I'm loving the whole voodoo title screen we get here. It fits her whole vibe like a glove. No cap, I wish I had that slide doll though. We quickly find the first key and head into the main section of her base. And man, it looks great. I'll show you probably my favorite section in the game, just to show you how cool this place really is. Even though it's like a swamp. Easily one of the best sections in the game, without a doubt. If you think otherwise, tell me in the comments down below what you think. What's your favorite spot? After we collect a set of keys, we unlock the gate holding the giant snake back, allowing it to wreck Miss Ruby's base, giving us a way forward. After that, we get three different minigames, one with a hover car that fires missiles. It's not much to talk about, you just shoot till everything is double dead. Then you get the key. Next, all we have to do is whack 50 chickens and avoid the bomb squad to obtain a key. Surprisingly, I lost a lot to this game. For some reason. I don't know, maybe I just gotta get good. Finally, the last minigame just wants you to light the torches with a flamethrower. The twist being you have 5 shots before needing to reload by running over a fish. But now we've got the keys to get us up to Miss Ruby's lair. Creeps too, lady. Cooking up an army of ghosts isn't a very neighborly pastime. <laughs> oh, Sly. I see your mouth moving, but all I hear is blah, blah, blah. Well, if jaws need to flop, Uh, so, Miss Ruby's boss fight. It just really boils down to Simon Says. I don't mind it too much, it's a nice change of pace. And it gives us a fresh take at the gameplay, even though I failed a few times due to misinputs. Overall, I'd still say it's a solid game mode. Oh, or, or boss in this case. You certainly got some rhythm, Raccoon. But it won't help you none if your fix me go out panda king. After taking down Miss Ruby, we get another page back, and this time it's from Slightent uh, Slight and Common? I think that's how you say his name. An ancestor from ancient Egypt. His ability was to straight up turn invisible. Pretty OP for a thief, I think. Born with nothing, the Panda King was enthralled by the fireworks the nobles set off every New Year's. He devoted a decade to studying the art of fireworks, but when he tried to sell his art, the nobles couldn't get past his look and forced him to leave. After that day, he used his art to get revenge against those who crossed him, beginning his life of crime and earning a spot as the chief demolitionist in the Fiendish Five. Also, he apparently has like some Kung Fu Panda flame hand, so yeah. 
I love all the fire surrounding him in this title card. He is, after all, a pyromaniac. It fits him pretty well. Not to mention, Fire in the Sky, a crazy name. Love it. We make our way up the mountain, taking down enemies as we go. And this is when the story takes a massive tone shift in my opinion. The Panda King buries an entire village under a mountain of snow, presumably ending them all. I honestly did not expect this to happen. It's, uh, it's like weird seeing like, like people actually die in this game. <laughs> you don't really expect it. You can bet the Panda King lit the fuse. I've got to find my way up there and fast before that lunatic squashes another town. As we head towards the Panda King's lair, I found this neat stealth section where you can strafe along the edge of a building, avoiding guard lights until you reach the end and hit fireworks to kill all the guards. It's a pretty neat section, right? Here's one of my favorite security systems. I like their laser grid coming at you, like, a lot. It reminds me of one of those Resident Evil movies I can't remember. Well, right now at least. If I remember it, I'll put it like on the screen somewhere. After collecting all seven keys, I can finally put a stop to the Panda King. I see you carry Kane of Notorious Cooper Thief Clan. Have you come here for revenge? To steal back the previous Raccoonus? That was my plan at first, but now I'm more interested in putting an end to your avalanche extortion racket. Why should you care if I bury a few worthless village in snow? You are a thief, just like me. No, that's only half right. I am a thief from a long line of master thieves. While you, you're just a frustrated firework artist turned homicidal pyromaniac. Insolent child. You shall pay dearly for your disrespect. Still, to honor your Cooper ancestry, I will send you to your doom with the beauty of my new firework technique. Flame fool. Now the Panda King is a very easy boss. All you have to do is hit him. The only issue is he's very tanky. Not that that's really an issue, really because he telegraphs all his moves, so there's no way you'll ever actually get hit by him. Like, fiery whip! Or, uh, uh what's the other one? Palms of Thunder! I think is one of them. Uh, and then like a like chop thing. I don't know. The point is you like he's easy baby mode, so win. Your skill with that cane is unparalleled. <laughs> After defeating the Panda King, we get another page. This time from Otto Van Cooper. He wasn't much of a physical force, so he used vehicles to aid him in heist. With these blueprints left by him, Bentley can upgrade the van. As Sly looks through his ancestors and notes, he notices an odd owl-like creature that resembles clockwork. Does this mean something? Or is it just a coincidence? The road to clockwork's lair is layered with traps and guarded by a giant death ray. Why he didn't use this before, I don't know why. After this annoying section, we get to drive us Murray for one more time. This time, all we have to do is collect 60 computers. Duh, that's it. There's nothing else to it, really. I'm not sure... why we had to do this, but... whatever. Next up is a pretty cool slice section in, in which you try to save Carmelita. Unfortunately, Sly gets caught in a death trap, with Bentley being the only way he can get out. I knew this was a trap. Looks like I'm going to have to do some fast and furious hacking to shut down that gas before Sly's brain is turned to cheese. Leading to the only, you heard me, the only Bentley hacking mini game in the game. It's not too difficult or anything. It's just, eh, it's okay. After Bentley turns off the gas, Sly breaks Carmelita out, and they work together to take down Clockwork, leading to the next zone. In this section, Sly loses his cane, which forces him to make a dash for it at the top of the wall. We control Carmelita and give Sly cover fire. Honestly, it's uh, just like any of the other Bentley section. I mean, Murray. Yeah. Nice job, Raccoon. 
Okay, here's my favorite structure in the game. All you have to do is climb up this structure and get Carmelita's jetpack. It's a simple task, but I'm going to show you the whole section just because of the pure adrenaline I get. Just from climbing up this thing and avoiding all the lava and doing all the slice moves. It's really great. I have to show you it. Enjoy it. See what I mean? It's great, right? I know, you don't have to tell me. Anyway, after making it to the top, we get the jetpack, and we begin our fight with Clockwork. Always? So that was you in the background of all those old pictures in the devious raccoons. How old are you? Perfection has no age. What? You're immortal? Revenge is the prime ingredient in the fountain of youth. I've kept myself alive for hundreds of years with a steady diet of jealousy and hate, awaiting the day when I will finally eclipse your family's thieving reputation. I love the idea of hating so much you become immortal just to spite people. It's the funniest thing I think I've ever heard. Okay, so. Clockwork can only be damaged when you fire at a spot Carmelita hits with her gun. He'll fire little projectiles at you the whole fight. so familiar with my family, you must have known my father had a son. If you hated the Cooper so much, why did you let me live when you stole the Thievius Raccoonus? Because I wanted to show the world that without your precious book, the Cooper line was nothing. Ah, well, there's where you're wrong. The Thievius Raccoonus doesn't create great thieves. It takes great thieves to create the Thievius Raccoonus. What the heck? Slide just dropped the hardest bar in the whole game! Bro, uh, Bentley's still my favorite. But like Sly, number one goat. But in his second phase, he'll start firing these huge rings you have to fly in the middle of to avoid. They also make this really satisfying noise I like. Just wanted to point that out. The last phase is a slice section where Clockwork has taken too much damage and falls into the lava. All we have to do is make it all the way to Clockwork while doing all Sly's, you know, classic tricks and whatnot. And beat Clockwork's head in, literally, literally just his head. And then we win. Pretty easy. It's also a really cool slice section. Just wanted to point that out. It's just not my favorite. I definitely like the, uh, the climbing up and avoiding getting burnt alive by lava. It's, it's way cooler in IMO, but I like this part too. It has a little bit of juice to it. Feet together. I, I totally almost fumbled at the end here. Watch, he almost knocks me off. <laughs> It 
took some tricky maneuvering, but I managed to snatch that last piece of the Thievius Raccoonus from Clockwork's claw. I had taken down each member of the Fiendish Five. Raleigh, Mugshot, Ms. Ruby, the Panda King, and finally Clockwork. I'd beaten them all one by one and reclaimed my birthright. Of course, there was no way I could have gotten here without the help of my pals. I know this hasn't been easy for them, but they stuck with me through it all. <laughs> Murray, boy, it took a lot of guts for him to get out in the field with me. I know he was scared, but he's got more heart than anyone I've ever known. And thank goodness for Bentley. Without his expertise, I'd have never found my way off that rooftop in Paris. A guy couldn't ask for a better gang of friends. <laughs> Who could ever forget the lovely Carmelita? Looks like we're not going to be friends anymore. Now that Clockwork's death ray is out of commission, we're back to playing cops and robbers. I thought for sure she was going to slap the handcuffs on me right then and there. But instead, she was true to her word and gave me that 10 second head start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, One. I felt bad leaving her stranded on that giant rock, but I knew it wouldn't be long before we'd see each other again. So, what do I think about the game? It's easily one of the best PlayStation 2 games you can have, period. The colors, the music, the characters, the gameplay, and not to mention, the story, they just work so well together, it's insane. It's one of those games you can play all the way through, then you play it again just to experience it all over again. Sure, I do have some minor issues, like not being able to adjust volume levels, which is weird, I think, because I'm pretty sure like Ratchet and Clank and Jack and, da Jack and Daxter had it too. They had, had like the volume thing where you can adjust volumes to your liking. Uh, another issue I, I I had, but it really wasn't too big of a deal, was sometimes when I when you, like when you're running around a Sly, you can like press the B or circle button to latch onto something, and Sly just would refuse to do it and just plummet to his death. But other than that, I'd highly recommend this classic to anyone who enjoys an action stealth game, or is just unsure about the game in general. It's honestly too good to pass up and I really think this game holds up incredibly well. It gets my mark of approval. And with that, I think we can wrap up now. If you haven't already, consider liking and subscribing because it really helps my channel and I would really appreciate it like a lot. Other than that, I think there's only one other cutscene we have left and that's the cutscene to complete the Thievius Raccoonus. So I'll let that play and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh yeah, stay safe out there. It's dangerous, guys. One. What could be so OP that it makes me come back? Amazing! Colonel Reed Cooper's Time Stopper technique. Press the triangle button and execute a flashbang that will stun all guards in the world for a few seconds. What the fuck? That shit is incredibly OP. At long last, the Thievius Raccoonus restored to its original state. The first time I held the whole thing under my arm since I was eight years old. The same weight that all my ancestors had felt beneath their arms as they had passed it on. Although, while other family members may have been great thieves, they all inherited the book. I got a chance to earn it. I had taken down the fiendish five, having used the moves my ancestors taught me, and become a master thief along the way. The time had come for me to chronicle my own adventures into the great book. This is gonna be fun.